Let's yeah. get started. Yeah. That's, that's going out. That's broadcasting. <laughs> uh, Do you know, guys, I think they can hear us when we're not, uh, like, I think they can hear the beginnings. I don't know if you've rewatched the Twitch stream. I screwed up. I screwed up on one of them. Uh, okay. But it wasn't. I think I've been good for the most part, but I screwed up on one of them. Uh, good, because you remember that time I specifically was like, that was not the time. This? That was not the time, good. though. <laughs> good. All right. Welcome to Venture Ventures, actual play, D&D, 5e, podcast, Twitch screen, stream, Twitch scream, maybe. Who knows? We may scream. <laughs> uh, and future YouTube show whenever i get around to finishing uploading it takes forever to do all that uh and i am your dm jake friday let's go around the horn here and plug and play and uh your name and whatever else you want to do uh introduce yourself let's start with uh, justin hey uh, yeah, my name is Justin Matson. Um, I'm a comedian in Los Angeles. I have a uh, stand-up special that I'm filming on December 6th uh, at 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. at the Oh My Red Theater in Hollywood. So uh, definitely check out my website, justinmatson.com, for tickets. Um, I'm playing the character of Sarah Sierra, who's a, an eight-foot-tall furbolg witch. Uh, she might become a wizard, but right now she's a witch. And uh, she's super fun. She loves to try to peddle her beauty brews and uh, trick people into giving them discounts through very stubborn negotiation. Yep. Really amazing how that worked last time. I... <laughs> uh, okay, let's go to Richard. Hello, uh, my name is Richard Cardenas. I am a podcaster. I host two podcasts, The Awkward Human Survival Guide and uh, Interview with a Nerd. Um, you can find me everywhere at Let Richard C. Uh, I am playing a Triton Sorcerer, Nihilus Nymerith. Uh, he is a bit of a dick. Um, try as I may, uh, he's stubborn and will not change his ways. So um, that's uh, that's pretty much it for him. <laughs> cool, Catherine, with the new mic. That new mic business. Um, hi, this is Catherine. He, I play the resident uh, Big Bedfellows hugger, Aradia Nightsong, who is a drow monk. Uh, let's see, let's see. What else can I tell you? Oh, uh, you can find me on the interwebs at Catherine, not IRL. That's Catherine, K-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E, not in real life. Um, and I'm plugging this week voting because i voted so go and vote uh voting happens everywhere on this tuesday november 6th make it happen be cool or be in school but also if you are in school you can leave and vote so do that um if you're 18 so (laughs) yes uh just remember as lewis black so eloquently said people died for our right to vote so go and use your voice thank you agreed uh, and you can register same day in certain states. I believe California is one of them. Dave. Ooh, I like hearing that. Hey guys, I'm Dave Roderick, um, engineer slash comedian. I'd like to plug the, the fact that I'm thinking of doing podcasting. So I'll plug <laughs> plug that. Um, I play a Kenku warrior. Plug an idea. <laughs> <laughs> We yeah yeah I mean the voting thing I mean I I that's that's great I plugged that like like four weeks ago when I voted I feel like I voted like a month ago um, yeah I can't I'm looking forward to these midterms being over um, yay uh, I mean I play a Kenku warlock um, called the uh, prodding rod proddy for short um, yeah I'm looking to get my my wings back. And trying to figure out what this what this brass rod does and such. Yeah, and you found That's out it. it wasn't brass, it just looks brass. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll see how that goes, amongst other things. And let's do a little recap real quick. The crew, the big bedfellows, 
made it back to Max at Venture Ventures Adventuring Agency to inform him what they found in the sewers underneath Innis regarding a mysterious death whistle that was causing dock workers to not want to work and be really scared and not not do their job. So they went down there and uh, told them and then also met one of the um, or what he introduced himself as one of the leaders of the the um, uh, dock owners the managers of the docks down there the where is my book oh right here it is um gilded quay is the name of their organization his name was horace rich a minotaur and uh he offered even though there was no reward for investigation he offered a hundred gold to the group which sarah managed to persuade him to double it with yeah really just not logical <laughs> arguments but they were so illogical that he it made him laugh and he agreed to it and so they got that much richer 200 gold and then went to investigate an orphanage in the Gidward and found kids bullying each other and uh Seem, things seemed a little off, and uh, met Auntie Nanny, the the headmistress of the orphanage, and proceeded to offend her, and uh, raise her suspicion. And Prati tried to magically persuade her. Didn't really work out. Um, what else? Oh yeah, and then at the end, uh, went to a Cobalt Reserve library, courtesy of Aradia, and researched fey creatures that met the uh, requirements that they were looking for, and I guess researched hags the most. I don't know if you guys have decided that that's what Auntie Nanny may be, but you found the book Fabul Fabulous Fey Creatures, Fair and Fickle. Did your research and that's where we left off we are going yes. to um just skip ahead a week uh okay. to the end of the month and is yeah. is is um is annalyn still trapped inside of the room yeah you we'll say like um oh you mean she's she wasn't no you're you're you mean your spell uh -huh. <laughs> oh yeah so you you cast uh what was it? Uh, Ray of Frost, Ray of Frost on the door. On the door uh, <laughs> just to as an F you to your sister, and uh -huh. no, that would have <laughs> that would have melted pretty pretty quick. Uh, uh. So she she's doing fine, and you would have. Uh, I actually thought you were concerned for her safety, not like. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you met him? No. no, no. Yeah. Uh, well, I can keep hoping. Um, <laughs> So, you guys have done some more recon on the orphanages. Does that mean we all get a long rest? Yeah, for sure. And okay. um, we will have said that you found kind of like a a tavern, an inn to stay at while you were uh, doing your business. And we'll call it Good Night Moon, Good Night Spoon. And it's in the Bayside Trap. Which is next to the Arbor Green, so it's relatively close to Max at Venture Ventures Adventuring Agency. And um, what else would you have done in that week? So it's also the end of the first month of the year, which the first month is rhyme and it's winter. You don't really feel it on this part of the world because it's more of a Mediterranean climate. Uh, it is, and it is, tomorrow is the uh, Festival of the Moon, which is a celebration of, um, kind of a loose celebration of the New Year, as well as, uh, where's my Pantheon? There we go. As well as, uh, 
uh, Celestian. And so you got that tomorrow. What would you have done in the week? Let's. So if you want to do more research, you can do that. If you want to pick up some um, supplies, uh, anything like that, we'll go there first before. Yeah, Parati does research on the uh, like the seven the seven crystals or okay, or, you know the crystals on. So the... yeah, go ahead and roll an investigation check with advantage because Aradia, I would assume, would offer assistance and her connections within the Cobalt Reserve. Feel free to say no. No, fuck everyone here. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Of course I would help. <laughs> Ooh. 16 plus 5 for 21. Wow. So you did a really... You're convinced you did a really good job looking for information on this rod. And you found out it's called the Rod of Seven Parts. Um, and it is a part of a magical artifact um, related to the Wind Dukes of Aka, spelled A A Q A. And they used it to. Is that like supposed to sound like a crow? I don't know. You'd have to ask Gary Gygax. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, it was used. It, it was used as a weapon against the the uh, Queen of Chaos. And you're really having a hard time finding more information on it, partially because of the erasure and the difficulty there, there weren't a lot of books to begin with regarding this artifact so what you, was the name again wind dukes the wind dukes yes the wind dukes cool and um so essentially they were the queen of chaos was had a concubine called Miska, M-I-S-K-A, a general in her army, and the rod was used against him. And that's pretty much all you found, even with that good, good of a role. You may have to um, go talk to some scholars, wizards, very old people uh, for more information and uh, yeah is there anything else you wanted to research regarding what I've told you so far or? um not really I was just a little confused so the, the the it was used against the queen of chaos and then the queen of chaos used it against her concubine uh no so the queen of chaos her concubine Miska was a general in her army and the rod of seven parts was used by the wind dukes against oh, Miska okay. against and the therefore okay. against the queen of chaos who is an oberith o b y r i t h i believe it's spelled and allegedly yeah, we'll we'll say you also found this out. Um, the rod was destroyed when it came in contact with Miska's blood, who was a wolf spider, a giant wolf spider, and broken. And he was nearly killed, but banished to the plain of Pandemonium, which is a plain of chaos, and imprisoned by. Um, lawful magic. Yeah. So you can do more research on the people I mentioned, the, the groups I mentioned, or you can do or nothing else if you want. It's up to you. I mean, I'd like to do some research on maybe how to get to the land of chaos. So um, to you can use a magic like a plane shift spell 
or a gate. Uh, doing more research. It's pretty easy to do this research. I'm not going to make you roll for it. Essentially, the planes, the material plane which you are on and Earth is on, uh, theoretically, you could travel from Exoros to Earth as well as any other D&D &D setting. But uh, you're on the material plane, so if you wanted to travel to other parts of the multiverse, uh, there are gates that can get you there. There are spells that can get you there. The gate spell is one of them. Um, yeah, it's just very high-level magic. You can make deals with powerful beings to get there. Um, yeah, and the, and the doors, there's a central city called the City of Doors, which is annoyingly pronounced Sigil, S-I-G-I-L. Why is that annoying? I don't know. It sounds better <laughs> if you say Sigil. It, it hits my ear better. Mm. I don't know. Sigil sounds like... Uh... Sounds like a, a somebody giggling. Yes, so. well, yeah, it just sounds not as impressive as the city is. Is uh, so this it's the city of doors, and essentially, you can get to any part of the multiverse through this uh, city, and there are borders in between planes that uh, can also so you can travel through the elemental planes. There's many ways to do it, but it's just very dangerous unless you have high-level magic, which if you do, then you could use a gate spell or yada, yada, yada. Uh, is, do you have any other questions, more specific questions I can answer? I, I was just kind of... I don't know what else. No, that's fine. I'm good. Okay. Um, and then Aradia is definitely researching how to kill night hags. Yay. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to use Volo's guide. What am I doing? Are yeah, we researching yeah, yeah, in like a out. library type of thing? Yeah, you're in um, yeah. Cobalt Reserve, sim the same one you were in, you've been in with... Uh, Aradia in the last week. Aradia, would you say that you're sitting at a table with a lot of books surrounding you? Uh oh. Yes, that feels accurate. Okay. <laughs> Why? Oh well, Nihilus is just lying under the table, pretending to do research whilst you <laughs> do it all. And and uh, Aradia occasionally will pet him with her toes. <laughs> <laughs> I, when, you, when you said that, I was like... Uh, it's very soothing. I was thinking <laughs> Nihilus was going to get really bored and just walk by Aradia and knock over her books. <laughs> just for fun. No. That, that feels accurate. <laughs> He's been doing a lot of yoga during this week. He's really calming himself. <laughs> Have you listened back to how you talked to your sister when you first ran into her? <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, well, I, was I was there, so. <laughs> no, the, the, that was one of the weeks where I was over at Richard's house while we were doing it, and we were in the different rooms, and he came down, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> it's like, what are you feeling? Yeah. I didn't rough. mean for it to get that aggressive. It just happened. <laughs> yeah. And now it's, now it's canon, so. <laughs> so, uh, you would have... A couple nights after you would have started researching and your interaction with Auntie Nanny, uh, Sarah would have been, you would have had a nightmare on the second oh. night. Uh, and I'm saying this now, uh, Catherine, because I, would, I just don't want to go back to you researching it because you would have been researching the uh, nightmare haunting. Uh, and Sarah, it's, it's it's essentially. I have 
I have like a, a green uh, antibiotic mask and some cucumbers <laughs> and like a towel wrapped around my head. And then like, I wake up like, ah, and like the cucumbers. Fall. And you guys, I assume at uh, good night moon, good night spoon, you would have asked for the room with the most beds or the biggest bed that you could push together. And you're all the biggest the, bed, yeah. uh-huh. the least number of beds. Oh, <laughs> Just one big okay. Bed. <laughs> uh, yeah, so they would have done that, and you guys are all sleeping in the same bed. So you, this nightmare is essentially showing you. You you spend a lot of time trying to convince people to buy your beauty brews, and you never are able to gain traction and make money on it, and you just end up being a failure. <laughs> And uh, it's essentially... Wait, is this a dream or my past five years? <laughs> it's, it's, it's a nightmare, except it feels like your whole life, it's, it, uh, you were experiencing that. And you're just a very impotent witch, as well as um, some of your fur starts falling out early oh, and you oh can't no. fix it. <laughs> um... <laughs> You run into some past acquaintances who, I won't say their names, but who just... Becky? Yeah. (laughs) Becky, is that you? Sure. Uh, Who does more of the same. And uh, yeah, so that's your, and you get no sleep from, you're sleeping and you have this nightmare, but you wake up and you feel like you haven't gotten any sleep and... um, you didn't ben- benefit from uh, a long rest on that night, and your hit point maximum is reduced. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> By three. Oh. And so, yeah. And I would assume, would you tell the others that? Yeah, yeah, I feel like I'd be like that. Guys, you're never going to believe I had a dream that was totally untrue because it was like <laughs> almost like I was a bad businesswoman, which is weird. And, uh, and, I, and I didn't sleep at all, and now I feel three points less health. <laughs> Out of how many points? <laughs> Out of 30, yeah, one... One tenth of me is gone. Uh. Metagaming Pigeon DM says, Cut that out! <laughs> <laughs> A vague percentage. So, uh, so if would you like to, do you think Iradia would research that night what was going on or no? Uh, yeah. Okay. No, of course she's going to research that. I don't know why I asked. And especially like, why Sarah of all of us, like why it was Sarah. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah, if you recall, was uh, annoying Fucked over that lady the most. <laughs> annoying the lady the most. <laughs> I'm uh, and Sarah, kind of like the kid in a horror movie, just draws with crayon a bunch of circles, <laughs> <laughs> and like. And then you find out like the circles are like my beauty bruise with like an X through them. Um, yeah. Was Sarah the one persisting on on going into like the pantry or something? Bathroom. No, she the asked bathroom. For... And kept on trying to feed her fingers. Like yeah. Kept trying to do that. <laughs> okay. I want to see if she eats fingers. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you know you found out that. Some of these visions and hauntings can only be removed by greater restoration spell or similar similar magic. Otherwise, it's continuous. And if it keeps happening, your constitution or vitality will keep being affected by this haunting and if you keep not benefiting from long rests you gain points of exhaustion which have really bad effects 
as you get higher. Uh, let me look them up. But you can do some things to prevent it. So in your research, actually, let's have you roll an investigation, Aradia. I almost got away with it it if it weren't for that pesky DM. <laughs> yeah, your DM got carried away. <laughs> Ooh, not great. Okay. Well, the six and then... Oh, six. Darn. Yes. So, well, you got a lot of information out of me already, but... Yes, I'll take it. So, you're... You know that a uh, protection from good and evil spell, which is a first level spell, can help with that, but they only last ten minutes? So, it's Ooh. that's not too helpful. Um, let's see. And that's all you find out in your research in the library. Like I've said many times, you guys can seek out other, other uh, gatherers of information and knowledge bases. If we wait four levels, I can cast Greater Restoration. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're... Uh, in your research previously, which was uh, a previous role, investigation role, if the haunting keeps happening and you reduce to zero, you're uh, no longer with us. So, oh no! Oh no! <laughs> but uh, okay. On the next night, unless you guys want to seek out something else. Otherwise, I'll just say on the next night, if another person gets a haunting, and this time, it is, we'll say it is Proddy, and Proddy, uh, <laughs> you wake up in this moonlit canyon with holes pierced through it, and the winds, you can barely hear anything because the winds are howling so loudly and uh you it's a maze of of sharp passages and wind carved uh crevices and as you're looking around please don't use that word please don't use that word <laughs> wind crevices is gross okay. crevices is a gross word okay. crevices uh, Ew. i should probably <laughs> i should probably make a note of that Cracks? <laughs> Cracks. Yeah, Cracks is so much worse. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Listeners, please vote down below in the poll. Uh, if you feel like cracks or crevices is the grosser word, thank you very much. So, uh, Prati, as you're in this canyon looking around trying to figure out what the hell's going on, you hear some growling barely, barely over the wind and uh, make a perception check with disadvantage because of the wind mm. 12 okay yeah so you see a a wolf head at first crawling down the wall towards you of this canyon and then you see that it has humanoid arms and then six spider legs and a spider thorax and it's looking aggressive and it's coming to attack you so go ahead and roll initiative oh sorry with disadvantage just means i roll once right or um... disadvantage means so if it's uh disadvantage you roll twice advantage you roll twice it's just one you're taking the higher and one you're taking the lower of the two rolls. So just... sorry, yeah, I got to re-roll then because I only rolled once. Okay, five. Okay, well, um, no, I mean it's basically the same. So go ahead and roll your initiative real quick. 
Seven. Okay. So, so am I adding modifiers and stuff when I'm when I'm doing this? Your initiative so. is your. It'll be on your character sheet, and it should be your dexterity modifier. Oh, okay. um, let me look at your. No, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I, for some reason, I can't see initiative. Where's initiative? Initiative's next to your armor class. You have an it's initiative at the of top one. in the center. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it's just plus one, so it's eight. Okay, so you go first. This guy's going to attack you. You're in this howling um, cavern. Jeez, I keep wanting to say that word. And um, go ahead and attack or not attack. It's up to you. I have all the same abilities in my sleep? Yep. Um, okay, I will... Let's see. I will just use a good old... Uh, Eldritch Blast on him. Okay. Go ahead and roll your attack. Find my... Okay, so I got to... Let's see if it hits first. So do I... Do, I'm sorry. Do I make a dexterity just to see if it hits? You roll your then... d20, and then you add your yeah. hit attack modifier, which is a plus 5. Okay, the 12. Okay, and yeah, that will not... That streaks by this beast as he closes the Damn distance it. on you. And um, he's definitely coming to do his worst. He's growling and spittles coming out of its mouth, and he's going to make an attack. That's a... I can't do like a like a bonus like a bonus action. What would you like to do? I'd like to do uh let's see. Hmm, damn it. We're gonna not not sure what I can do as a bonus action, but I will. If, uh, you can cast hex. If you go to bonus action under your actions, you can heal yourself. Ah, uh, okay. That's why I was just looking under spells. I couldn't see what my bonus actions were. Okay. I love when the DM battles with himself. <laughs> what am i bad uh what am i battling well you're like well you could do this or you could do that this here's how you could attack me but yeah it's part of the part of you're the just deal. kind is all i'm saying you're just kind <laughs> yeah, I'm torn. yeah sure <clears throat> i'm torn i don't know whether to help or not so usually so I if i cast if i cast hex can i then can i cast uh Eldritch Blast the next go around, or do I because it's a concentration spell? Do I just have to? Yeah, keep... you can concentrate on one spell at a time, and so you can cast other things and do other things while you're concentrating. If you get hit, oh, okay, it, it may break your concentration. Yeah, sure, I'll cast Hex then. Okay, so any extra um, damage you do to the target does another one d six necrotic damage as well as they have disadvantage on ability checks made with a chosen ability. What ability, okay. uh, strength, dex, con, intelligence, wisdom, charisma, would you like to X? Strength. Okay. All right. We rolled uh, 20 to hit bite. It's going to try to bite you. And I assume that will hit. Okay. Does that sound cool? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that supposed to be a bite sound? <laughs> no, I was yeah, waiting. Yeah, there. Was <laughs> Never mind. That was it. So you take five points of damage and um, uh, make a constitution saving throw. 
which is you roll a d20, and then under saving throws... Oh, God. <laughs> a two. Okay. So I really shit my pants. You take four poison damage as well. And you're poisoned currently, and it's your turn. Oh, whoops. Uh, just keeping track of my damage. Um, and I assume, so everything's the same, so I'm using up my spell slots and yep. stuff like that. Okay. You didn't. Uh, you only used one for Hex. You didn't use one for Eldritch Blast. That's a cantrip. Yep. Oh, man. Um... So the he's right next to me now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll try to use Eldritch Blast again. Okay, and that'll be at disadvantage because you're within melee range. Uh, unless you have the Warcaster feat, it's disadvantage to cast a... Oh, okay. Crap. You can still do it. Um, I'll do, let's see. I'll do shatter. I'll cast shatter. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, I did a, a constitution. You and, don't, you, uh, don't, you don't make, I make the uh, uh, constitution oh, got it, got it. saving throw. Okay. And then I believe I take half damage if. It doesn't make it. Uh, it doesn't make it. That's a six for its saving throw. So how much damage does it take? Does this so spell it's, uh, take? When you're casting a spell using a spell slot third level or higher, which I automatically cast at third level, and its uh, damage increases 1d8 for each slot. So 48. Above two, so 48. Find my eight. Should be the... Yeah, it's like the weird yeah, shit. Diamond one. So 16 total. You shatter this thing into a million pieces as a large, as a loud, yes. thunderous, uh, cacophonous sound destroys it. And all of a sudden you find yourself back in your bed <laughs> next to your your fellow companions and they're fast asleep and you're staring up at this disgusting looking man who has an inverted face meaning yeah. his eyes are where his mouth should be and his <laughs> mouth should be oh. where his eyes are and he has no nose just a hole where his nose should be and he's dripping some sort of viscous fluid onto you through his <laughs> nose oh, no. and he's looking down and he goes oh interesting wolf spiders. i go let's turn that frown upside down wolf spiders <laughs> it's interesting that you went to pandemonium and that that's where Something is bringing you there. That's good information. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow night. Oh. And uh, then you wake up the next morning not feeling rested, and you are down uh, six total oh. hit points. So all the hit points you took during the dream, you don't have to go back up to your normal, so those will be wiped away. But then go and um, any spell slots you used, uh, you can reset those as well. Oh, nice! Whew. But your max, but your max hit points yeah. are down that that amount. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Aradia is definitely going to research that weird no nose thing. <laughs> also, has anybody seen the video where they turn um, 
they turn Joaquin Phoenix's head around. And so his forehead, if you just look at his forehead the way that it is, he has a little mouth on his forehead. <laughs> wow. Anyway, it's like really, I highly recommend it if you ever get it. <laughs> Highly recommended. Because that's what I was thinking of the whole time was Joaquin Phoenix. <laughs> Guys, we may, we may, and this is not just uh, Prodi, we may need to do a battle royale next week just to get you guys uh, flourishing in the combat environment a little bit more. Yeah, sorry. I just, I had, we hadn't done combat in like, Two, the last yeah, two games and yeah, two just... episodes. So yeah, I understand. Um, but yeah, I just think um, we may need to do that, or we'll see where this goes. So uh, you guys are researching. When that. you say when you say battle royale, are we killing each other? Is that what's happening here? If, <laughs> if that's something you would like, if you would like it to be a no. PvP environment, we can do that. <laughs> or only hugs only hugs you can hug them to death if you want that's a monk ability i think uh it can be a pvp environment <laughs> or it can be just like a where you're on the same team fighting something else or some things some other things we can discuss that if you want after after the stream uh but let's just see where this goes we may not um need it so you research about what he saw he describes what he saw and it's just more of could be various creatures hags have the ability their true forms could be various things it could be all all different manner of disgusting non-traditional face face arrangements <laughs> so uh it's just more of more of the same um and yeah, anything else anybody else wants to do? Uh, Nihilus, you're probably... I'm not going to assume, actually. I just did the same thing, which is uh, assume you wanted to look after your sister. So tell me what you would do. <laughs> <laughs> no, what? Why would he do that? Um, uh, let me think. Well, no, he is going to try to like help her out. He's not completely heartless. Um, he's just annoyed with her is all. Yeah, um, she doesn't believe him currently. Right. Uh, I, I think Nihilus wants to get all the information before going back okay. to the orphanage. Um, so really what he wants to know is kind of like any weaknesses that we can find of a night hag. Because uh, Annalyn in the future did tell us she was a hag, right? So that is like definitive. She she was positive she was a hag. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So at this point, we suspect that it is a night hag, and I just or Nihilus would like to just confirm kind of like what advantages they can go into a battle. So if it's a so single solitary hag, I think I, I believe I mentioned this last week. A single solitary hag. Yeah, we hack. know that they're... Okay. No. And we also know that they're prone to making covens. Is yeah. That they want to... That they can and they, that... they Yes, they put up with it because of... They would prefer to be by themselves. They can't really stand the company of, of other beings unless the beings are subservient to them. But they put up with it because it may, they form a coven and it makes them much more powerful. Um... And they can, um, together they can make, they can send people to, uh, to a prison demi-plane, which is a, a kind of a plane of their own making, essentially banishing them. Um, they can... Which, by the way, Aradia's official, um, hypothesis is that uh, she's on the thirteenth birthday that uh, this woman is like made to hag to just in case we were what Aradia was thinking about all this. That is what she's thinking. Say that again. Uh, I don't know if it was my connection or yours, but broke up a little bit. Okay, so Aradia's thought is that she is 
uh, taking these kids on their 13th birthday and either sacrificing them to the coven or turning them into hags to make a coven. That's Aradia's official hypothesis. Okay, so what you research is that hags will kind of re replace... Um, they have a few different ways to create different uh, hags, but you've researched that they can replace babies in the womb with their own kind mm -hmm. of offspring. And wow. when once they reach the age of 13, they turn into their true form, their final form. Uh, Is are, are hags um, a race, or are they like a demonic... They're from the... Uh, most of them are from the Feywild, which is uh, another realm in the multiverse, similar to the Material Plane. It's where elves originally came from, mm. and uh, I like to think of it as very Alice in Wonderland, where things are very vibrant and vivid but also extremely weird and can be very dangerous and terrifying. Um, but you would have to do more research on the Feywild. Uh, Night Hags, though, Aradia found out, um, actually spend most of their time on the lower planes, and they're more fiendish than Fey at this point. And okay. as, as I said last week, hags through magic or through force of will can change their their subtype from the other versions. And um, yeah, and they have all sorts of <clears throat> uh, trinkets and uh, abilities and potions at their disposal but if they're in do, a coven yeah go ahead do any of us in the party um can either of us like change uh disguise ourselves or do anything like that C cast illusion spells or anything um, um not a radio yeah i can do um a couple things i can disguise myself um, I can, uh, do invisibility. I can cast friend to, like, make them think they're my friend. I can charm a person. Um, because um, I'm thinking, what if we spy on this orphanage a little bit to try to gauge if she does have other hags with her in her coven or something? Because if if she has, like, multiple hags, I don't know that running in there and trying to kick her ass is going to be the option uh, or, mm -hmm. or like what, what we need to do to get in there and take this, this wench down. Yeah. Because you do some recon. If she's like growing baby hags, then I don't know how to look for like a womb. Are we looking for fetuses? Or I don't know well, I guess I just want to know if she has like any, like, older women who are coming around or anything like that, or okay. she's just like the only one other than Annalyn that's there. Keep in mind the yeah. shape changer ability. For her? Uh, or All or... hags can shape change, I believe. Oh. Night hags definitely can oh. and turn into anything of medium size. Oh, so she, 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 like her friends might be like a fire hydrant or something. <laughs> I think it has to be an actual I think it has to be an actual They could be like a child there If you see like a like fire organic. hydrant In a circle with like a satanic Goat <laughs> in <the> <laughs> You know something's wrong um, Okay well but So maybe it's like it could be like the men Of the or the or like the other workers Like it doesn't have to be like an old lady Right it could be like Smaller anyone. medium humanoid Oh, so maybe it's like a baby. It could be one of the children too, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's let's. I'm down to go there and try to like ask questions and tempt them with my fingers again. <laughs> so, do you want to just go <laughs> in there? Or do you want to? Not tempting enough. 
Uh, what if we like? Um, can we disguise ourselves and go in like as a, in disguise, or like, or send in a spy, my spider, or something? Or you have or, like, ask. you have magic or a disguise kit, or yeah, I have. Uh, I could disguise myself as part of my racial ability, uh, for bulk. So I could do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm done to go undercover. We know how good I am at a human interaction. <laughs> and um, do you want? Do you guys want to do like some recon from a distance first, or do you just want to send Sarah yeah. in? Yeah, if we could do more research, that'd be fun. I don't know what what that would be. Just yeah, I, I Aradia is gonna stake herself out side, kind of like hidden. Um, in some bushes for a little while, just make, to sort of watch the comings and goings. Make a stealth check. Great. If, if we're like kind of speeding through a week, can we do like like on Monday she like stakes out, and then on sure. Tuesday, yeah. This? yeah, yeah, definitely. Um. Okay. So I got twenty-one. Okay, so you find a. A crack between two buildings that you're able to squeeze through because you see a a dangling rope. Uh, oh, creepy! And you climb up, and it's kind of a, a crawl space in between two apartments that puts you that has a viewpoint kind of raised up three stories down onto these three orphanages that are next to each other. The middle one you went to, which was the Sugar Plum home. And so you have a really good vantage point and you see Auntie Nanny and you see her talking to um, some kids who are looking up at her, just kind of like nodding. And then she scoots them away and they immediately start hitting each other. And then, uh, two other individuals approach her and start talking to her. And one of them is a very tall, thin uh, half-elf. And he came from the, from your perspective, the left orphanage, uh, which is the Cradle of Mercy orphanage, orphanage. And uh, the other individual is a halfling. So very, so three feet tall or so. And um, longish hair, shoulder length hair, brown hair. Very sweet face disposition and they're all talking right now. Um, and she came from the master of the little petals home. She's the master. The master. Of the little, I'm sorry. She is the master of the Little Petals home. Little Petals is the name of the home. So I think they're both hags. Well, I, wait. I, do you convey this to the group? I guess I didn't hear any of it. Yeah. Where are you guys at this time? Um, I'll be like on the perimeter. Do you want to stealth? Yeah. Okay. So roll your stealth. Uh, 18. Nice. Nice. Can I, I guess, can I disguise myself as like, yeah. what would be a good disguise? Maybe like an orphan? Like look like one of the kids? Or what do you guys think? Uh, or like a fire hydrant? Or... I think she would know. <laughs> <laughs> I think she would know who is her kid and who isn't her kid. So maybe. Yeah. Um... Maybe, ooh, disguise so maybe yourself I as a pregnant a woman. Maybe. Ooh, that's a oh, good one. oh yeah, and then she can try to like, oh my god, then she tries to like uh, take over my womb, but really it's just like a can full of snakes. Oh. <laughs> it could be that. <laughs> it's like, it's like one, of those, one of those like cans of like the snakes like shoot. Out. <laughs> okay, okay, not real okay. snakes. <laughs> not real snakes. Okay, yeah, I, 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 uh, okay, so I'm gonna use my uh, disguise self ability. And I'm going to turn it into a. Uh, I'm going to look not like Sarah. I'm going to look like a, a slightly shorter, uh, blonde, uh, red-skinned, <laughs> uh, 
uh, woman. Red and, skin? Uh, I, well, she's normally blue, so I'm trying to think of the opposite thing. Okay, maybe just maybe just like a a typical skin, like a normal human skin. And uh, can you disguise yourself then, as a pregnant Taylor Swift? Yes. Oh my <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe a pregnant Taylor Swift. Okay, so Nihilus, you're you're you think you're being sneaky and staying outside. No, I'm being sneaky. And <laughs> uh, I don't think I know. <laughs> and I'm, I'm eating a spoonful of peanut butter as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Prati, what are you doing at this moment? Um, <laughs> I'm, I think I'm just here for support. I don't, I don't think I can really disguise <laughs> myself or anything. <laughs> Do you want to stay back, or do you want to? What do you want to do? What kind of cantrips do you have? Do you have any like? Uh, any, I was looking. Like... I was looking for something that would that would help, but I don't have any like disguise or. I mean, I've got do we some... detect anything like detect magic or anything, or protect from poison or anything? I don't. I don't know. No, I, I don't. I don't think I have anything for this situation. Um, I, can, I have vicious mockery. You don't want can, to throw I your voice mock... somewhere. I can mock, oh, yeah. uh, Use your uh, voice throwing skills to help my <laughs> mind. You can play the pregnant woman voice. <laughs> <laughs> I do I do have a sort of plan that I need the DM to not uh to ignore. Um <laughs> not not pretend he knows. You mean uh, meta, not metagame? You don't want him to uh -huh. metagame? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. Here's my plan, you 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 all. Um I, okay, so Sarah's going to go in pretending she's a pregnant woman. I want to see if there's like a room or something that is big enough for us to maybe fight in, but also can be like closed off because I have a spell called Wall of Water that I would like to like trap her in um, if we can. Uh, and and Aradia, I, wanna, I want you to kind of check out to see if there's any time where she's alone or anything that like kind of occurs throughout the week uh mm -hmm. like always at the same time or anything like that so that we can just kind of trap her and isolate her from everyone else when we do when we do inevitably decide to attack okay so yeah, i, I like just want this. us to be to be aware also, of any advantage like that richard i'm just giving you my inspiration die for today because uh, <laughs> oh. i like that you have a plan so take it yeah thank you That's i the will first, take it the first time we've had a plan and, I mean, yeah. I guess I, I guess to help out, I could just like during this week, I could each day just track her movements. Yeah, and just, I'm thinking uh, like yeah. either with your voice throw or like I have thaumaturgy, um, we can kind of like even trick her into a room where we have like a child calling out to her or something. So do we, yeah, so I could do just we think that, um, I could just get in my little. That, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> could dress up like a little kid and just. Just have the voice of a child or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's perfect. But no, no. Because I'm only uh, like four feet tall, so. Yeah. What were you gonna say, Justin? I would do, I was wondering. Um, I don't know, like how what level she's at. Like if she's like a super like level twenty witch or whatever or hag. But um, do you think that maybe her minions, like the other two people, would be a little easier to trap? Like, I wonder if we should isolate one of them, or is it better to just go to the main one? You mean like maybe pick them off one by one? Yeah, I don't know. I I, I don't know. I, I guess maybe I don't want to. I don't want to be too cautious or whatever. But I don't know. I will I... open up like a little child's lemonade stand like across the street <laughs> from the from the orphanage. This is great. Yeah. And Aradia is going to spend most of her time on Auntie Nanny, but she'll still, um, you know, when things are looking a little boring over there. Uh, sort of peek in at Little Petals and uh, Mercy, uh, Cradle of Mercy. So, um, everyone make an intelligence check. Uh -oh. Those of you who, who have been <laughs> haunted have one level of exhaustion. So that means oh, disadvantage on your ability check. <laughs> 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 Oh no! I did not roll well. Wait, <laughs> did I? Oh, oh I no. did not either. Well, we're all stupid today. Um, yeah. 
That's I got an six. eight. I got so two. Yeah. So I take I the lower of the two. two numbers, but then I still add my modifier? Yes, yes. Okay, so I got a 16. Okay. Uh, oh, good. Can... All of you see... Wait, can... Oh, yeah. All of you see various people walking in and out of all three... Uh, I guess Aradia would mainly see this. All three orphanages and Prodi... Uh, sees them because he's a little bit farther back but I guess uh, he sees them walking up. You recognize a couple individuals who have mousy features from the warehouse uh, and you killed them and you recognize them Mm. and they're going into the Sugar Plum house and they exit east and um, take off. And you, so you see various brutes, for lack of a better term, entering these orphanages every so often. Um, but that's what you noticed, uh, Prodi. And if you guys... Um, you guys haven't enacted your like Sarah infiltrate yeah. plan yet. Okay. Can can I find a cleric and try to get healed or for like a greater restoration or how does that work? Yes, you would have to go to the Deference District and uh, find a cleric. And you can, which god would you like, what temple would you like to to go to? There is a temple for Tyr. There is a temple for uh, Moradin, Pelor, and uh, Garl Glitter Gold, which you've been to in the future. Uh, Bahamut, the Platinum Dragon. You can find... Maybe the the platinum dragon. Okay, so you enter uh, this beautiful building. It's one of the bigger temples in this dist- district, and again, this deference district. This is where the temples are 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 kept, kind of contained in. All of the temples are are cramped together. This one's one of the bigger ones, and there are two heavily plate armored individuals standing guard outside the temple and they look at you as you come in and they don't do anything they just uh you know i try to blend in with whatever the other like i try to pretend i'm part of this religion so like i gla- i grab a pamphlet and i drink punch and i'm like oh i'm i'm i love this god the, the, the dragon platinum plated, dragon plated dragon yeah do you say plated dragon or platinum dragon wait Wait, what was his name? Muhammad. Oh my god, I remember, but I want to see what you say. <laughs> you literally went, oh, I want that. Yeah, roll an, <laughs> yeah. Roll an intelligence oh, check. I... <laughs> with disadvantage. <laughs> oh no. Uh, 12. You know that the Platinum Dragon's name is Bahamut. Bahamas. Okay. Uh, oh, I love Bahamas. Uh, so. <laughs> and the guards, the guards turn, and he goes, uh, "Excuse me, sir, what did you say?" But Hamid, he's only like the greatest platinum dragon. Make ever. a deception check. <laughs> Disadvantage. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> deception. Okay, I add I add five, so ten. What's your charisma modifier? Uh plus two and I'm proficient in okay. deception saving throw. So ten, let me see what they I get. They go, Sir, we heard you <laughs> say Bahama and <laughs> Oh. You will show oh, maybe... some respect when you're under the Platinum Dragon's wing. 
So oh, if you want okay. to, it's just where I'm from. That's what we call them. But it's fine if we no, all you have don't. To no, you don't. Stop it. Just stop. Oh, you don't. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is there going to be a problem in, in if I let you through, sir? No, I'm I'm just here to worship the greatest bladed uh, platinum dragon ever. But, also, but, why does everyone ca keep calling Sarah Sir? <laughs> why? <laughs> She's disguised right now. Uh, oh, am I still? I'm a, I'm a pregnant woman, right? You said <laughs> <laughs> she's a pregnant <laughs> Taylor Swift. <laughs> uh, I thought you said I thought you said you would have disguised yourself, and I assumed you would have oh. used your ability. Uh, <laughs> oh well, I don't. I don't know. I'm only allowed once per month. So I don't know if I don't want to waste okay. that yet. So I assumed that you were uh, oh. you were um, making yourself look like similar to them, but since you don't want to use that, you're a pregnant lady. All right. So although uh, yeah, I'll just be pregnant, Taylor Swift. Though. I'm very like, tempted. <laughs> I'm very I'm tempted. Week. I'm very tempted just to keep continuing <clears throat> that joke along because it's pretty funny. <laughs> Uh, it has been I, constant. <laughs> and then I get offended. So every time he calls me sir, I'm like, oh, well, look who is the tables have turned because you don't even know what my proper pronoun is. So yeah, but... I feel like you should be the one apologizing <laughs> to me. Ma'am, I'm not trying not to get into Bahamas. your temple. I'm not trying to get into your temple, though. So you're trying okay, to get in here, and I'm the guard. <laughs> I bet Sarah's heard that a couple different times. <laughs> so... <laughs> So the other guard turns <laughs> turns to his compatriot and says, Arthur, don't even bother. I don't know why you get into arguments with these fools. Just turn oh. them away and move on. And both of them step Thank in front you. of the door and don't allow you to pass. <laughs> and so you're not, you're not granted admittance into the temple. So you might have to try a different temple. All right. Well, I'm going to go to the, uh, the temple of... Tear. Okay. And uh, make an intelligence check. With disadvantage. Okay. No, no. Uh, oh. Okay. Uh, three. <laughs> so you're not like you can't quite remember <laughs> why or who Tear is, and you're, uh, but I'm crying. I start crying. Yeah, you think it has to do with actual <laughs> tears, and yeah. you're very confused when the symbols and emblems on the guards and various people around the temple has n there's no there's no picture or there's no tear involved there's no like crying or anything there's just like a god like a, a, a humanoid <laughs> being helping people you're just like really confused by this temple um and there's like scales um and uh I'm, so i'm gonna try to like like follow oh i'm gonna follow someone who's going in and do whatever they're doing so if they're like doing like a scale egyptian walk i'm gonna do that just kinda, just what blend is a it, scale blend a scale egyptian walk um I don't know. okay whatever oh, yeah, don't gonna, you... so normally. uh yeah you're gonna try to blend in go ahead yeah um what do I want to make you roll here? Since you rolled so bad on that intelligence check, I guess it would just be <laughs> a, another deception check. Or, no, a performance uh, check. Uh, make it a performance. Okay, and do I have disadvantage on this? Yes, all your ability um, checks. Okay. Uh, so I'm not proficient in performance, but I have a plus two to charisma, so I got 15. That'll, that'll be fine. As you're following someone in, not making... A lot of uh, just is it like a attention a Taylor Swift level of performance? Yeah, you sure whatever whatever that is, you <laughs> you nail it, and okay. it's a it's a busy temple, so you manage to not draw attention to yourself, and you see three uh, what you would guess are are priests of tear or clerics of tear helping people so I go. <laughs> and uh one of them turns to you and goes ma'am shh 
uh, we'll be right with you if you wouldn't mind. I'm almost done here. And okay, I'll be me me behind the pillar. And she ignores <laughs> that and finishes with the person <laughs> she's dealing with, and blesses them, and they walk off. With uh, and uh, and I'm hiding behind the pillar. And she's looking around for you, and she finally checks around the pillar and goes, uh, and "Yes, like, how can I be of service to you, ma'am?" And then, uh, and then I speak in a whisper because I don't want anyone to, to see me standing out. And I, um, I say, "Hey, I need a greater restoration spell, please, because I'm uh, a evil witch cursed me." And uh, it's not good. And I, the great almighty tear, obviously, of my balance is off. And I need her, uh, I need tears' wisdom to rebalance myself. You say a, an evil witch? Uh... Yeah, a night hag who hurts children. Oh my god, that sounds terrible. Uh... You're telling me. Try to roll deception check. So, a donation of at least 450 gold is required for a greater what restoration spell. Oh, so you're just selling your religion now? <laughs> is that, it is that it would be a donation, ma'am. Hmm. Um, wow, well, this we really need to get money out of politics. This is crazy. Um, I don't know if I exactly have 450 gold, okay, but well, I do... Uh, well, I do have a homemade, uh, can I try to, I'm going to try to like bribe her with a sure. homemade beauty brew. Is that okay? Yeah. Persuasion. Can I, so I'm going to use my chart and I need four D20s. Do you all want to roll a D20 and then I'll try to sell whatever I roll? By the way, I would have given Catherine DM inspiration for giving Richard inspiration and finally using the player inspiration <laughs> mechanic that <laughs> never gets used. That, that, oh, yeah. just, you know, I've now used it twice. Okay. I've used it twice. I think you forgot oh. the first time, and I may or may not have given it to Richard again. Am I playing favorites? I don't know. <laughs> uh, cool. So, so Richard got a one. Can you guys roll a d20? Uh... All of us? Yeah. And don't add anything. You too, DM. Uh, I just need four of them. Ten. Just, okay. Nine. Captain. Oh, wait. Yeah, I did need one more. So, yeah, Jake, you want to roll? Eight. Let's go to the product. Two, eight. Okay. And let me, um, All right, so I, let me yeah. tell you more about what she looks like since you want to help her with uh, her beauty, I guess. So she looks like she has seen some battles and oh. wears full plate armor and on her back is a war hammer uh, and she's got kind of a, a burn scar just on a, a little part of her uh, side of her head. Um, that's the most distinguishing battle mark she has. So, oh, uh, and do you want to do you want to ask her her name? I don't believe. Uh, oh yeah, what what was your name? Does that cost four hundred fifty gold, or will you just tell me? Um, <laughs> no, I. That's that's free. Uh, is, oh great! Is, is your sarcasm free as well? Ooh, uh, yeah, it's plenty. Okay, my name is Anna Marie Vineyard. Oh my gosh, Anna Marie, I love that name. That's such a beautiful name. So, Anna Marie, I I I know I, I I'm a little cash poor right now, but I invested all my gold in my homemade beauty brews, and so I wonder if maybe we can make a trade. But I noticed that um, on your neck you have a little bit of a burn scar, and and uh, it's it, it's fine. We all have our bruises. I I have my own scars be sure um but i your luck because i actually have a homemade beauty brew that can help cure and hide that and you know if you're ever self-conscious about your scars or you you feel like you're going into a job interview and you kind of want to you want to present yourself in a in the best way possible 
that I, if you tried my, my Neverwinter Mint Nourishing Naturally Radiant Elixir Fixer, <laughs> it, can, it, it can just, um, so the, the nourishing part just kind of nourishes the scars, and then the Naturally Radiant just kind of gives it like a youth flow, and, um, and it's Elixir Fixer, so you drink it, and uh, next thing in the morning, you'll be good as new. And it, it smells like Neverwinter Mint, so a little bit of a, a cooling refresh. Make so, a so I think go ahead. persuasion yeah. roll, just a normal roll, since I won't give you a disadvantage on that. Okay. Uh, so I'll do my first roll, which was a 12, and then I'm going to add my persuasion. Oh, good. I'm proficient in that. Okay, great. So I add five. So 17. Uh, she goes, she looks around, and you can tell that she's, for whatever reason, she is making sure any of her fellow clerics and paladins aren't paying attention to her, and she takes it from you and looks at it real closely and she says, well, I, I understand, you know, wanting to be independent and starting your own business, and I can definitely help you out if 450 is too high. I can, I can, best I can do, I mean, you know, this, this, don five gold, maybe five. Exactly. this donation this donation is used to help the poor and and yeah i am poor and i i could use the help right now so i appreciate it. i would <laughs> i would uh recommend not pissing off uh evil witches in the future unless you're oh yeah I, the thing about evil witches is that they kind of just have an axe to grind and it's easy to get in their crosshair <laughs> and she looks at you and says <laughs> Sure, I'm sure that's how it went down. Uh, and she says, if you can can give a donation of 150 gold, I can have the uh, head of the temple, who's the only person who who can uh, cast greater restoration because it's such a high level spell, uh, help you out and possibly cure you of this. Uh, 150 silver is a lot. I guess I guess I could do that. Do you want me to? Um, what was your you name again, from... madam? What was your name again, madam? Sarah. My name's Sarah. 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 Yeah. I I I don't understand your negotiating tactic here, <laughs> and I'm trying to help you out, and it feels like you're just being disrespectful of the temple and tier and and the main to God himself. So, you know, I would appreciate just you you showing a little more deference to, to the environment you're in. Okay, so paying, paying religion to help that is... Okay, yeah, uh, here, I'll, I'll give you 150 gold. And I'm, but I'm, I I can't promise that my Yelp review will be that high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She can't stop herself. She can't stop. I don't know what that is, but uh, I I I will I will go get uh, my priestess, and uh, she'll be with you in a moment. So uh, she goes back and takes your 150 gold Ugh. do you still want to do this uh i don't know if you remember me saying uh that you there's the definite potential for being haunted continuously so oh. do you do you uh, <laughs> how many 150 gold do i have uh, i don't know let's see what did we get paid we got paid 200 for the last thing yes yeah yeah okay so i, I had uh i had 25 gold no way i had 40 i had 48 gold i'm not telling you how to there. spend your money but i just want to i've said like yeah. aradia's research she would have told you that 
the haunting usually continues. So, all right. Um, this is yeah, a waste of your I'm... money. <laughs> this is a yeah. waste. Of your it's money. Not a waste. It'll make him. It'll okay. make her feel better immediately. Yeah, I guess. I, yeah, I, I guess I didn't know how expensive they would be. Uh, 150 gold is really steep. So I'm. Uh, I'm gonna say to the um, to Anna Marie. Uh, Vineland or whatever her name was. I have it written down. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> uh, so uh, bad with names. Hey, actually, uh, Anne Mary, uh, I, <laughs> I she just shoves your gold I... back to you and walks away. She's so done with you. Okay. <laughs> you enjoy, enjoy the beauty brew. I'm sure you'll. Oh, she it. gave that back to you as well. Oh, okay. Well, I drink it, and it makes me look radiant and beautiful. <laughs> so you still feel like shit, though. So, uh, okay. So all right, then I leave. Retcon that, I guess. And I, and I and I and as I'm leaving, I say to the god, like, it's pricey in there. <laughs> it is all for the god of tear, the maimed god Grimjaws himself. <laughs> it goes to help the poor okay. and needy and protect against the evils of this world. Ugh, well, I'm poor and needy, and he ain't helping me. Find yourself <laughs> blessed by being in the presence of Grimjaws. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not human, but maybe tomorrow. Your baby is blessed cursed. by the presence of the maimed god. <laughs> okay. All right, well, hopefully this glass helps the curse I have. You look here. radiant. What do you use on your face? Yeah, that was myself. You should take it. It's in a mental match, never winter mint elixir fixer. I was just kidding. Help you with you. It's clearly oh. as a result of the blessing of Tear, the maimed god. Oh, okay, well, I don't know what his deal is. I only roll a two. But, uh, all right, I'm out of here. <laughs> You have yeah, yourself okay. a blessed day, sir. <laughs> yeah, you, you are. Right <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know how naturally ready you think I was blessed, but I don't, if you think I'm a sir, then you got issues. Um, <laughs> and you're not sure if, if the guard uh, across the way guarding the entrance is laughing or not, but he, uh, <laughs> as that interaction took place <laughs> so we're gonna take a quick break here of how many minutes five or ten do you guys want to take a break i'm okay with five yeah five. that's yeah. fine with me five okay five 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 okay back in five Bye. <laughs> Okay, we're back at it again, and Sarah just got had kind of a weird interaction at a temple, <laughs> and um, so is there anything else you'd like to know, Aradia, in your research, or are you good? I am, of course, not good, but I can't think of any other questions, so I guess we got to move on. Okay. Wait, did, did we decide if they have any weakness? Or would it be? They're very, I mean, she, it's, they are very protective. You, you could say this about any, 
any creature really, but they live abnormally long lives, longer than dragons even, and uh, they're very protective of that, so if worse comes to worse, they will forsake all their possessions, because obviously you can rebuild your possessions if you're still alive, if you since they live so long. Um, so they're very just risk-averse, and... Um, Oh my god, we should just light the orphanage on fire. <laughs> <laughs> and they're very... You know, the thought did cross my mind. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I was like, well... well there's children in there. <laughs> okay, so a few children get hurt. Uh, well, we could, we could escort the children to safety, maybe? Well, I don't know. I, I like your plan, the, the wall. I, I, I have a question. Um, this is outside. I also just thought of a question. Yeah, this is outside of gameplay right now. Um, when we're battling and we come across or we use a spell or do something that uh, an enemy that we're battling is weak against, do we know that? Yeah, I will tell you something like if if they have vulnerability to something or on the flip coin on the other side of the coin of that is resistance <clears throat> or immunity, I will tell you I will say things like they seem to be dam hurt by that a lot more than okay. you would have expected. Or I will say that damaged them, but uh, they it, they shrugged off what you would have expected, or I'll just say if they're immune, like, you don't think it had an effect. Okay. Um, and then in gameplay question, um, Aradia looked to see if there's any way to identify marks of hags in a coven like if there is something that we would be able to notice that connects certain things to each other i mean you'd have to there are divination spells like legend lore i'm sure would probably help but that's let me look up the spell. Yeah, but no, like, just marks on their person that would kind of... I mean, you'd have to be, like, a, all the covens are going to be probably different, and you'd have to be some... <laughs> you'd have to be Volo himself to... Uh, to like a, a coven expert. Yes. Okay. Um, Great. Is there, like, is there, like, an easy bait coven? <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here! You have to leave now. Uh, yeah, so... I love that. You guys can also, like, they are known quite well to make deals with creatures and things, but they will never seek out deals. So you Ooh. don't have to necessarily fight. There are other options, but... Um... Well, we need to get rid of this bitch. Uh-oh. <laughs> Nihilus is back. <laughs> you, you, seem, you seem very confident in fighting an entire witch coven. <laughs> like... just, just the one, for now. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Take down the leader. 100% uh... there's a coven. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you have that, and... Is there anything else you guys would have done during the week to prevent any more hauntings? Otherwise, I'm just going to roll up the... Is um, is I... there anything we can do? Like Yeah, like remember not... earlier I said mm -hmm. you could... Uh, there's, like, protection from good and evil, but that's only ten minutes, so I don't know how well that would work for, you know, a whole night's rest. There was Magic Circle. Um... Yeah, does anyone have those spells? I don't have Actually, I just For gave whatever... you more information than the intelligence check that I... Yes, yeah, that's so true. I slipped up again. Uh, I... Um, Aradia, for whatever reason, just decides that she wants to surround herself with salt, so she pours a bunch of salt around the bed because she's watched Hocus Pocus one too many times, so... Okay, make, <laughs> make an intelligence check. I'm not smart. Why do you keep asking me to do that? <laughs> Five. Yeah, you you think it'll definitely work. Oh, great. <laughs> oh, Wait, I, 
Okay, so I, I, if I long rest, I can change spells. I think. Or no, can I only change it when I level up? Uh, if know. you're a wizard, which you know, technically, since we, oh, okay, haven't done it, but yeah, once you're a wizard, you have a spell book with all your known spells, and you have to spend time picking new spells and learning how to use the verbal component as well as the somatic component. So every morning you can prepare okay. new, a certain amount of spells. So like like magic circle like is well I, I guess I'm looking on my witch list of spells and it's on there but I guess I should I, yeah I have to figure out if, if I could learn that spell in a week I guess. Yeah it, you would have to either buy the spell scroll and learn it off of that. Which okay. Is will cost you materials and time to do as that's not including the purchase of the spell scroll. Um, okay, all right. I guess next time then. Yeah. So, you guys want to do more? I want action. Okay. Yes. Uh, do, do you want to do your recon thing that you had planned earlier, or are you not doing that? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I I dress up like a like a little uh, kid in uh, Oshkosh Bagash, and I set up a <laughs> I set up a lemonade stand outside okay. the, the school. And um, uh, Sarah does her thing. Nihilus, I have, and Aradia's uh, stealth checks. I have those. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have a disguise kit, Brody? No. You're just going as yourself. <laughs> yeah, I just kind of. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm usually wearing like a robe, so I just kind of like tuck my my beak beak into my robe further, and I just kind of like I'm a shadowy little kid, <laughs> and I'm, I take on the, the, the I take on the uh, the voice of a child. Okay, we're gonna. I... Lemonade uh, for sale. We're gonna go back <laughs> to raise money for for the repair of the uh the the Titan tubes. Titan tubes. Uh so we're gonna go back to to uh when because I, I had assumed that you um Sarah would have approached when they were talking outside or uh, to talk to Auntie Nani, or when she was outside, or do you want to go, even if she's not, do you want to wait until she's inside, or what do you want to do? Well, let's see. So we're trying to get, we're trying to do recon and like learn bef- from afar before we go in, right? Like, right. And do you think I should walk up to them and talk? What do you guys? Well, think? I had assumed you would. Uh, do you want to wait for Nihilus and Aradia? Yeah, I feel like if they're if they're trying to like get information from afar before I go in closer, I feel like I would wait to like okay. hear what they have to say. Okay. Right. I think, All right. Yeah. So. Yes. Uh, so I'm I'm kind of by the lemonade stand, like sip in there, and then like every well, few minutes I'll be like, we kicked. Your <laughs> lemonade stand is close to the orphanages, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I you so you guys are essentially like where the kids play, kind of. Um, cause if you imagine the, the, the orphanages are in a line essentially, and then the kids play out front in front of them, and then you guys would be next to that. So, cause the kids play yeah, in the Yeah, so street. we can see, we can like, we can maybe interact with some of the kids. We can see the, the orphanage from afar, but like, hopefully we don't stand out like close enough that the witch would just spot Are you trying to get kids either. to come to the lemonade stand? Well, who are your customers, Prady? <laughs> <laughs> Adults? That will determine um, how close you get if you're trying I, to get the kids I, there. We don't serve any particular demographic. <laughs> Everybody loves lemonade. <laughs> so you're trying to make money with the lemonade stand <laughs> so you're this is like a side business while everyone gets uh, does recon you're trying to make some money i telepathically go like i'm trying to lure someone who likes you know to abduct children and eat their fingers out so here you're close 
and, uh, and created and created just yeah i'm right across the street yeah okay uh, so yeah. so when you're setting up uh and uh nihilus and Aradia are doing their thing stealthy uh auntie nani is uh out there talking to kids and just as you're setting up she sees nihilus running between buildings what and yeah you rolled an 18 on your stealth check but she uh rolled better Dang. um she sees you <laughs> nihilus and starts screaming out city gods gods oh no <laughs> oh, no. oh no there are harassers can here can we cause a distraction i guess it's too late she already are, you, are you guys going to continue to try and set up or are you going to take <laughs> off <right? laughs> Um, oh. Aradia is staying exactly where she is because nobody's seen her, so she's just staying put. Okay. What um, about... I'm gonna okay. Yeah, like, uh, like they so wouldn't they... know we're with Nihilus, right? They've seen. She has seen you very well. You made a very good impression what? on her. Uh, okay. Well, well but she's I, in I'm, disguise. I'm in disguise, right? Oh, as okay. A, as a pregnant Taylor Swift. All right. So uh, like, body's not. So she wouldn't necessarily know that I was like with no. Nihilus or anything to do with that, right? Um. Can I just come out and try to like convince her that I'm here to speak to my sister? Like, we're oh, family. why are you? I just wanna... Why are you skulking around then? I, I, I just wasn't sure. I mean, last time we made such a bad impression. Um, I didn't want you to be just so angry, so I decided I was just gonna try to go straight to Annalyn and just talk to her. It's well, been least... a while. My family's worried. I just wanted to. Make sure she's okay. So at I least can you didn't here. bring your your fear bulb, how? <laughs> oh, that tall bitch. No, um, oh. no. I I let I left her. I I know she's annoying. Um, I left her back. I, I'm sorry I, for her. Uh, so, well, myself as Taylor Swift sings, <laughs> uh, hums hums the the song she has about the haters gonna hate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's at this moment that she sees Prodi and says he's with you too just give up the I don't believe what? he's setting up she's pointing to Prodi now um, I don't even know who that is you were with <laughs> you were that's just a little person in a cloak I don't know who that is no one can believe how good this <laughs> lemonade is! <laughs> and Cards, I, oh wow, it's if you want to see your sister, you need to get rid of them because this charade you got, I, you're not going to convince me <laughs> that you weren't spying on me for whatever reason. I've done nothing to, to all of you. Uh, you're not going to convince me that... Both. Both. Both of them. She only knows that there are two. Yeah, yeah. Can you clarify what she knows? Like, does she? She hasn't seen a radio yet, but she, and she, she does. She know that I. She I'm... knows you guys are a group. She has seen Prati. She has seen Nihilus. She has already seen all of you previously, but uh, she only sees Prati and Nihilus now, and she assumes that you guys are somewhere around. Okay, so she. Okay, okay so she's not. Okay, so I'm just gonna tell her. Uh, all right, I'll go up to that little kid at the lemonade stand. I don't know who that is. I'm being honest here. Um, and I will ask him to leave to make you more comfortable. If that if that is okay with you, would that make you more comfortable if that little kid over there just leaves? I can't believe you're... Just make a... Uh... <laughs> and I... Uh, I mean, wait, he's not wait, that wait. far away, so she is in the street. So <laughs> make a persuasion check with disadvantage no to... okay. and while this is happening uh sarah as taylor swift kind of like walks uh, innocently uh away from the lemonade stand to try to disassociate herself with that good okay oh god uh six that's ten i'm gonna use um blessed by the gods because I rolled a 10. That was my lowest. Um, what does Blessed it, by the Gods do? Um, it, or sorry, Favored by the Gods. It lets me uh, roll 2d4 and add it. Okay. Okay. 
Um, so that's another seven. So I got 17. Do you want to use inspiration as well? What is that a D eight? You have player inspiration, which did you guys write down? What expires after this? It expires expires at the end of the episode. Um, did you guys write down what I told you a player inspiration was? Cause, uh, let me take a look. Um, I think it's, oh, is it a D4? I'm, let me double check. Um, on my shuffling papers to pretend I know where that is. <laughs> yeah, I have down 1d4. Okay. okay. Oh, wait. I have d6 inspiration die to give in my notes. You're just going right? to. Yeah, but how did he. I don't. I don't know. I just wrote D6. I yeah. don't know what that is. So, uh, do we all have a D4? No, listen. So, <laughs> in session zero, I said, <laughs> all of you, if somebody says something that makes you laugh or yeah. does something, um, you know, risky or, or just makes a move that is bold, you can give them a player inspiration die, which we'll say is a D6. And, uh, and I asked you not to abuse it as in, like, I'm just going to give it to this person and, you know, just kind of round-robin it around. Um, <clears throat> so, we'll say... Oh, so the DM is a D8. The D the DMs is a D8. Okay. Okay, that's what I had written down. That's why I was... Con so, a DM inspiration doesn't expire, and I can... If it's good enough, I can say it's a D10 inspiration. I can say it's a D6 DM inspiration. Mm. Um, just, but I gave you, I gave, uh, Aradia a D8, and she gave you a D6 player inspiration. A D6, okay. So I'll, I'll go ahead and do that since this could expire anyway. So that's another plus four, so it's 21. <laughs> so despite Prodi just being, like, 15 <laughs> feet away, sh you're, you're... <laughs> Silver tongue convinces her. She's like, <laughs> yeah. I guess uh, you're here by yourself then. Uh, yeah. And you I were am. just skulking around because. Well, like were... I said, I knew you. You were very displeased with the, the way we behaved, and so I was just trying to avoid you because I didn't want you to be upset again. Okay, and you want to see your sister? Yes. Annalyn. That's that. Yep. Okay. Yes. Well, why don't you come on in and please, um, <clears throat> you know, try not to break anything, touch anything. Oh, yeah. No, it's a lovely home you have here. We try to help the kids, and and uh, you know, a lot of them are born into tough circumstances. So, do you do you run this <clears throat> this place alone, or do you have help? Oh, I have plenty of help. Uh, oh, we try to a lot of reformed individuals will help out as well as uh, you know the the city has helped out the Gid ward. This whole ward is was started for um, orphanages and helping out the poor and needy and the city guards help out where needed uh, and just before, that's who I was calling to get rid of you when I saw you skulking around. Uh, I see, I see. Um, so is this like a recess time for the kids? Yes, they, we allow them to play and exercise, get work out their energy in between their studies as well as <clears throat> any um, crafting I may, they may be doing. Oh, and how long usually does that last? Why do you ask? Oh, it's just, you know, I remember as a kid just running around and having my own recess time, and they usually only gave us, like, I didn't like that. We try to get them outside at least three times a day uh, for 30 minutes to an hour, depending on mm. how, how much energy they have on any given day. Your sister uh, does some of the teaching here. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And she mm -hmm. is doing a great job and is very good with the children and loved by the children. And you are lucky to have such a wonderful sister. 
uh, in your family, and I can't imagine having a better sister. Oh. <laughs> These are fighting words. And, These she, are just fighting keeps, words. and she just keeps like going on <laughs> about how Nihilus great of... just keeps his mouth shut and nods. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And she, she's super good at teaching the kids how to craft with her fingers and... Um, oh, with their fingers. <laughs> and, and... Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> Do they know, have pretty fingers have, or like... You have beautiful hair just like yeah. her. Oh, you, you... I woke up like this. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I'm going to leave you in the uh, entryway here and go retrieve Annalyn if you don't mind waiting a minute or so. Yeah, no, I don't mind that at all. So there are various kids running in and out of the building and um, she walks up the stairs and disappears for less than a minute, comes back with Annalyn and uh, Annalyn is looking slightly annoyed at you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and, understandable. <laughs> and um, she approaches and goes, "Hello, brother, again. Um, what, you need something? Something? Yeah. Is there a room? Is there a room we can talk privately? She can, looks we, can we go to through? Auntie Nani, and um, Auntie Nani says, "Well, you can go to the common room just across the way there. They're have finished setting up for." For the meal service so not much is going on there the kids will be coming in after recess so you can use the common area and as you enter that area there's just long harry potter style benches of of uh tables set out so um you've got this room you think all to ourselves oh we think i think okay oh well, i mean if you think <laughs> if you think um you're dealing with a hag, Aradia, you know, would have told you that they're magically just impressive beings, so who knows what's going on, so. Okay. So everyone can hear this conversation, though, that I've been having, right? Uh, oh, we have those snake things, don't we? You have yeah. to activate that for, for um, a message, and a message, I oh. believe, is... It's like a walkie-talkie. Yes, and okay. you have to use your action to activate it, and a message, I believe, is only 25 words in length. So, so can you, like, can you, like, while you're talking to her, like, repeat everything she's saying as an action? <laughs> 25 words of that? Oh, yeah, oh, that's it's not incredibly <laughs> specific. Um... <laughs> Yeah, there's no uh, word limit. Like, I think sending has a word limit, which is sending is like sending a message over long distances, um, which is what Max used with you guys in the beginning. Uh huh. So, but bottom line is no, they can't hear you um, unless okay. unless you're constantly like holding on to your ear. Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, hey, hey, Anna, how you doing? A little annoyed, brother, that you would visit me again after locking me in the bedroom by freezing the door. <laughs> yeah, uh, we have fun together. Um, listen, <laughs> I know, I know that I, I came off a little aggressive again. Uh, well, I guess for the first time <laughs> because the future you. Um, okay. Anyway, um, listen, me and my friends are here. Uh, we just want what's best for the children. Uh, and I think you do too, right? I am working here for the children, yes, mm -hmm. of course, mm -hmm. but, uh, you were telling me I was in mortal danger, this is a, a witch or some evil being, and she has been nothing but <coughs> kind to me, and promised right, to teach right, me some right. magic, and, yeah. Listen, I know that we haven't always seen eye to eye, you and I, uh, but we are still family, and we wow. both still love each other. Um, and I just need you to trust me on this one, because I have uh, your best interest in mind here. You know, brother, I don't know that um, you didn't <clears throat> quite treat me uh, 
how a big brother should a lot of times, and the way you came in yesterday was not, it was more of the same, so I don't know that you do. While I, while I do believe you want the best for me, I, I don't know what your motivations are, and I have no reason to believe... <clears throat> We're in Listen, an orphanage, for goodness sake. Like, exactly. Exactly. We're in an orphanage, and there are children around. And as hard as it is for you to believe this, you sent me here to help you out. And um, the family sent me here to find you and, and to uh, make sure you're okay. Uh, now, you know me. I wouldn't just do that. Right? Right? And well, I, you, right? You... I, I believe you that the family would send you to bring me back because all they want me to do is essentially get married and continue the family lineage. But I, 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 I will, I will lie to them and tell them that I didn't find you if that's what you want in order in in order for me to get your trust. Make a persuasion check on your uh, future talk. Oh fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> I got a one. <laughs> oh no. Hylas. You you were never one for for just Persuading. terrible lies and stories that are ridiculous, but I don't know what's going on with you if you thought a fanciful story like that would, would work on me or something, but I I want to make a difference in this world and and help these kids and I can do that if I was you know I wasn't born lucky like you to be blessed with your abilities and so I have to learn a different way I have to I have to get this these abilities a different way so this is the best way I know how to do it and but you but you can still learn no one's stopping you i just think that this is the wrong avenue especially since you specifically told me that how how do you suggest i learn it other otherwise um you can go back to uh the training that i took and they will and they will show you <laughs> And if and if you don't want that, did, did I? I'm sorry. I'm getting a message. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Nihilus, it's a radio. I don't know what's happening where you are, but <laughs> I just wanted to throw it out there. What if you trained your sister? Oh fucking hell! How about this, Annalyn? I will train you. <laughs> and she starts <laughs> laughing like. Do you really think that would we you would have the patience to do that? Or I begged you to train me with your magical abilities for years, and all you did was freeze me in my room constantly and use it against me. So pardon me if I think that's laughable. By the way, with the message spell, so she can when Aradia did that, you would just get it in your ear. You wouldn't need like you could even pretend like. That's not happening okay. because you don't need an action to listen. You just need to okay. use uh, an action to activate it. Okay. Um, okay. I, can uh, Sarah use an action to <laughs> Nihilus? Yeah. <laughs> and she says, um, Nihilus, I'm getting you a strawberry lemonade. Two lemonade. I'll leave. We have multiple options. <laughs> okay. Okay. I send a message back. Thanks. Um, I know. I don't know. I, I know I've been a dick to you um, and all that, but I was being your little brother. I was supposed, I mean, sorry, your big brother. I was supposed to be annoying to you. Uh, but look, listen, I'm giving you my sincerest uh, sincerity re right now. I, I, if, if that's what you want, and if you don't want me training you, I'll find someone else who's, who's just as equally qualified. I just think that... Uh, this right now is a dangerous situation, and I think you need to uh, get out. Well, if you can, I suppose if you can get me into the Wandering College of Anista or that one college in Revan's Run, or any university in Vera Mall, I would probably do that if you're willing to tell 
you know, lie to our family. And Oh, yeah, yeah. I will do so that. So if you can get me into a college, then um, I suppose I would. Let's do it. Let's do it. You should you should write a, a acceptance or admission essay about her struggle <laughs> growing up with her old brother. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um. So let's let's do it, Annalyn. I, I like I'm staying plan. here until you get me that acceptance letter because. Okay, but I'm gonna need you to help me. With what? That's the deal, right? With what? Listen, my friends and I, we have a plan to help you out. Help you. Help you out here. Um, <laughs> uh, we just need to know... Uh, or sorry, no, you don't know anything. Um, <laughs> we need you to here help us... Here we go us. again. Just <laughs> condescending as ever. <laughs> well, you don't, you don't believe me when I say that Auntie Nanny is a hag. So uh, we just need your help to get her alone. You call a lot of people any... hags in your life, and now I think you're, I don't know if you're calling her a hag because she, you don't like her, or if you think she's a literal hag, which both are equally ridiculous because she's a great woman and, and helps children. Uh-huh. Okay, uh, but we need your help to get her alone in a room because we need to talk to her. She knows a lot of magic, Nihilus, even more than you. Oh. Oh, okay. Is this your warning? Well, I don't know what you're planning to do, but if if uh, if you plan like the reason I came here partially was so I could learn magic, and I'm not going to go to any old Joe Magic on the street. Is there anything that you've noticed that she's a, a, a has an aversion to? I I I, I message Nihilus like Nihilus, <laughs> ask her if we should burn down the orphanage. <laughs> I ignore that. <laughs> and I was ignores that message. Um, that she's averse to. She's uh, well, she's very particular of having her meetings, uh, staying on schedule with her meetings with the other uh, house leaders. Orphanage heads. Yes. Why can't I think of the name for a orphanage? The head of an orphanage. Headmaster? Sure, headmaster. She definitely uh, <laughs> loves... She has a very strict schedule. She um, has a bunch of knickknacks that she uh, keeps in her office. She has a collection of handbags, um, uh, various sizes that the kids design in crafting. Um, but... but weaknesses like she's she's very protective of that stuff and uh very protective of the children and very protective of making sure they have you know their celebrations when it's time and uh, but i don't i don't understand what you mean weaknesses like what do you what do you mean uh well you say she's very strong and we're just trying to figure out how to take her down annalyn we're, we're gonna take her down <laughs> Is what's happening. I like you dropped your... <laughs> um, so, I'm not going to help you on that unless you give me some evidence that she is evil. Until that time in, uh, in which you show me an acceptance letter to a college... <laughs> Mm-hmm. Do you need toenails um, or something? <laughs> is this is this what you need? Like, is that evidence enough for you? Well, she makes sure that when the orphanages are cleaned, that you know the the hair and other toenails, I guess, is disposed of in a very specific way. But I don't know uh, what kind weird. of way. She has a jar of toenails. What, what does that mean? What what specific way? She just micromanages like when the, every day there's someone who is assigned to essentially collecting the hair off of pillows of of That doesn't um, seem weird to you at all. Collecting hairs off a pillow. She says it's a matter of uh 
cleanliness and um a lot of these kids to the hair a lot of these kids have have lice and they get and then what happens to the hair i don't know but you know what happens to the hair no i just witnessed her being eating the hair no disgusting what why would she eat the hair i don't know i'm not a hag i don't know (laughs) okay you know what (laughs) (laughs) nihilus there's a complication hurry we're out of strawberry lemonade (laughs) <laughs> Listen, uh, Annalyn, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back and we'll we'll continue this conversation later. Uh, but I will bring you that evidence that you need. This has been riveting. Thank you. All right. Well, I guess I look forward to you getting me into these colleges. Mm-hmm. Me too. All right. Um, Bye. And uh, okay, so Nihilus skips out. Don't even say bye to Auntie Nani. Oh, I, is she still in the room? <laughs> what, is she She's still, in like, the adjoining room, room talk, like, talking to kids and like fixing their um, little bow ties. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Aww. <laughs> okay. Well, then I pass Auntie Nani. I say thank you so much for letting me visit with her. Um, I hope that we can do this again sometime. Sure. Just um, come back next time, like a normal person <laughs> would. The, yep, you know what? That's on me. I'm a strange little one. Okay, well... Thanks for understanding. Have a good day. <laughs> you too. Thanks. Okay, so I run out um, and try to like walk down the block a little so she doesn't see me, and so uh, I convey the, the message to everyone. As you're walking out, make a perception check. Oh, okay. Oh, god damn mother f. <laughs> 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 um, perception. I got four. Everything seems good. <laughs> <laughs> what what has Aradia been spying? Yeah, I was just gonna ask. Can I can I peep something? Can oh I yeah, try? good call, uh, Aradia. Go ahead and make a perception check. Oh, nat twenty! Yay! And then, hold Yay. On. Oh. And then... everything is not good. Yeah, and then I perception is my highest is my highest thing, so I got plus six. So twenty six, baby, tell me what's happening. <laughs> you see, uh, Nihilus's soul just making fun of all the kids as he's walking out. No, I'm kidding. Um, so, <laughs> but it would happen. <laughs> uh, as you're sitting up on your little crow's nest area three stories above this these three orphanages and watching these kids playing you start at first you're like i might be tired or just something i ate or whatever the shadows look funny and um the shadows then they they continue to kind of morph and um of look almost turn into a th- instead of 2d they look like they poke out and uh who did we lose nihilus richard yeah um he's back thank god <laughs> so the oh, where did the fucking one sec oh yeah um you're not sure you might these shadows look like they're screaming and trying to stab each other as the kids are playing and being violent and you also aren't sure if you see uh let me look at your backstory cobalt soul reserve had no friends you knew people though yeah i knew people so one of (laughs) i'm just gonna make this up um great one of the uh, members, kind of people in your same class of the Cobalt, at the Cobalt Reserve where you studied, um, their names were Huford, Buford, and Duford, and they're triplets, and and yeah. and uh, they were really annoying, and you... I call them the Three Fords, just so you know, Buford. Okay, 
and three you fords. see the three Fords, like, their faces on these children, and their eyes are bleeding for a second, and you see uh, kids jumping as they're playing. You realize, oh my god, they're, they're jumping around and playing around a, a pile of burning books, and um, you're just seeing all this crazy shit that's really scary. Um, and uh, then it disappears, and you're like, okay, I don't know what's happening. Um, yeah, and this is, you continue to see those types of things. And uh, anytime the other two headmasters of the uh, other orphanages walk out, their shadows are very imposing and bigger than they should be and um, look like they're eating other children's shadows and stuff. That's all you're saying. Oh, just that. No big deal. Um, okay, so Aradia... Um, uh, Aradia has, like, decided to just stay as still as possible. She also kind of gets that... Um, she didn't take any psychotropic drugs, so what she's seeing is probably important and uh, you magic own, related. Do you t check your um, own shadow? Do, you check do your, I what? Check your own shadow. Oh. You check <laughs> to see and look at your own shadow. Like, do you look back or look for your own yeah. shadow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, a, of course. You don't see it. Ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> um so Aradia's uh definitely hyperventilating hyperventilating a little bit. Um she tries to sort of move very uh quietly in her air. Hold on wait, would there be a shadow where she is? Because she's like in between two buildings. I guess it would depend on the time of day. Very, in my like, brain, she's like shrouded in darkness. Yeah. Uh the the part that's so the sun's rays are kind of uh more horizontal. It's not like midday. And you would get a little bit of a shadow off of like the front part of your body that's sticking out. Um, but you wouldn't get like a full shadow. You would expect to see a shadow if you're on your stomach, on your hands yeah. and elbows. Like if you just look down and the sun is yeah. right there, you would see yeah. your shadow and it's not there. Um, Aradia tried, like finds a little stone and tries to throw a stone at one of the kids' shadow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, make a uh, investigation check. For a, for a stone or whatever. <laughs> 19. Yeah, you find what you're and looking then... for. Uh, uh, uh. Great. What? So I'm going to throw the stone at the shadow. Hope it, to see if, like, if the shadow is reacting on its own or if it's very much so attached to what the kids are doing. So when you throw the rock, it hits the shadow. I'm not going to make you roll dexterity to see how you throw it. Actually, yes, I am, because if you fuck that <laughs> up, that'll be funny. So. Oh, this is Come not on. good. I've had two good rolls in a row. This is not great. You have high dexterity. Oh, my God, I got a 20. I got a 20. Yay. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah. Even though you're in an awkward position where you are, you manage to perfectly hit the exact point on the shadow that you wish to hit, and um, nothing discernible happens. The shadow doesn't seem to react. It seems to just be trying to murder other shadows and um, burn books and shit like that. Mm. Okay. So it seems like whatever is happening, uh, Aradia is sort of putting together that... Uh, whatever is happening is happening maybe in another plane or it's not ha like it's not happening here like it is happening but it's not happening here so um she uh she messages everyone else around her um and says uh 
is anyone else seeing this? Does anybody else know the lemonades out? I'm totally. <laughs> no, I don't Wait, care when... about the lemonade, Sarah. <laughs> it's a bright, it's beautiful clear. day. Oh, I'm skipping down the street. Uh, can I roll a perception check to see if I? You're can all idiots. Down? I'm. <laughs> <laughs> to see if what? Uh, to, if I see what she's seeing, sure, the, go the ahead. Shadow? Yeah, because I because I wasn't looking from right. Yeah. Uh. Look at the shadows. Uh, 18. Yeah, you see, um, you see shadows and, uh, they're not, they don't look, they're just abnormal sh shadows. They don't look like they belong to a child in some instances. In some instances, a shadow is missing a head. In some instances, Ew. just weird shit like that. Um, um, I'm gonna message them and say, uh, uh, check to see if some shadows are normal, because if they are, they're probably real children. Ah, uh, Aradia mm. does a scan to see if she can see any normal-looking shadows that aren't being demons. Nope. Oh, all of them. They're and... all, we are surrounded by <laughs> insanity. And... We need to leave. Sarah. So I just want to point out that we could have burned down this entire orphanage. <laughs> and... <laughs> and also, you're assuming that all the kids are evil based on their shadows not being evil. So, um... They might be cursed, right? Like... Yeah, they, like you were with the haunting. And by the way, because of the haunting you and Prati uh, also see just more of your worst nightmares. And, you know, to finish it out, why don't we just have Sarah and Prati describe what their worst nightmare would be? Like a small mm. vignette, if you will, of, of, of their character's worst nightmare. Uh, you want to go first, Prati? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Um, so am I like in the, am I at the lemonade stand or what am I doing? Am I I'm messaging through the, uh, through the little, yeah, you're snake, hearing all this, ear snakes. um, unless, unless the people who are using the ear snakes don't want him to hear it. I assume it's an open channel. Uh, but yeah. And you've made uh seven silver actually on your lemonade stand. Ooh. Nice. Sweet. Nice. Subtract, Forget. subtract, um, eight <laughs> copper. It cost me ten gold to make the lemonade. <laughs> subtract, subtract eight copper for the uh, supplies, I guess. <laughs> Bad, Brody. Worst nightmares. Oh. Um, worst nightmare is, I'm like, am I describing it like as I'm in it, or, or just? What, what, what Prati might see in this instance. Oh, okay. So Prati is like counting his silver and then he's just like, Ugh. he's like, he, he just sees like he's back in the sh like shanty town where he grew up in Doomerville, but everything is way bigger and he's just like shorter and shorter and shorter. And he he sees like his mom and dad and they're they're just like living in squalor and like all the all the 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 floor is just getting like lower and lower and lower in their shanty town and they're or in their little um shack and like the the countertops <laughs> that they have in their shack uh are getting higher and there's just like there's lemonade and then there's uh there's like let's, let's just say gin on the shelf and it just gets further and further and Prati has wings in this dream but they the wings just get smaller and smaller and they like shrink up and he's oh. trying to like flap he's trying to flap up to the to no, the, no. He, he, oh, can't, no. Just, he can never quite get there he's just rest it's like re kind of like in a restless way like the way you try to like sleepwalk in your sleep and you're like ah like i can't run that's what he's doing he's trying to flap up and get yeah so all of that you're like seeing that and then you snap and you're in the same spot where you were uh yeah that's fantastic uh go ahead justin 
Yeah, so in a similar fashion, uh, I'm reaching for a strawberry lemonade. And then it's like just out of my grasp. And I realized that uh, I'm shrinking. So I'm, no longer, I'm, no longer, I'm no longer eight feet tall. I'm six feet tall. And I'm like, no. And, um, and I have stretch marks from where my body got short. And then, um, and then I see my marks, I'm, stretch marks from how your body shrank. Yeah, like, like, cause it, like the skin condensed really fast. So now I have stretch marks. You have like, like loose skin. Oh. Yeah. Loose You've got wings now, and right? like all that stuff. Yeah. It's just terrible. <laughs> and then I see my, my whole, uh, my mom is like holding the strawberry lemonade and like, like you want some, but I can't reach it. And then my whole village, my Firbolg village is around me laughing at me. And, um, and then, uh, and then I, I get a phone call from my messenger snake and it says, uh, uh, Hey, this is the IRS we need <laughs> to check your beauty bruise line for some weird auditing. And you're um, like, what the yeah. fuck is the IRS? And they're going to audit me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. I think, and then I think internal revenue service can also be magical. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Uh, so, yeah, fantastic. That's where we'll leave it off for the day. Episode 13. Good job, guys. And yeah. we will say we will start next session on the first day of the Festival of the Moon. And all of you, uh, we'll say Nihilus and Aradia had your haunting as well. Your turn with the oh. haunting. And um, we'll have you describe your haunting next week. Mm. Uh, Aradia, your max hit points go down four. Mm. And Nihilus, your max hit points unfortunately go down nine. Wow. Wow. Oh Discrimination. My God. That was targeted. <laughs> I rolled it, bro. <laughs> <laughs>